Welcome to the Alyosha Society, where we are pursuing truth, beauty, and goodness through great literature. Now the Alyosha Society presents Five in Five, where you get the who, what, when, where, most importantly, the why on works of great literature, presumably mm, in about five minutes. In this video, we're going to be answering the question, why read the histories of Herodotus? Let's get right to it. Background and summary. 500 BC, the Persians are on the move. If you're a bit rusty on your geography, that's modern day Iran. So the Persian army is marching westward and conquering and marching and conquering everything in their way. The Persian army reaches from modern day Iran all the way to Greece. Herodotus, the Greek historian, is giving an account of the empire building Persians. They conquer Babylon, modern day Iraq, Arabia, Egypt, Libya, modern day Turkey. But Herodotus does something very unique and particularly fascinating. When the Persians are about to conquer a new land, he pauses the action and gives an account of the customs of those people. It could be anything related to their culture, what they eat, the clothing they wear, burial customs, marriage, religious practices. And these portions of the history are incredibly interesting. It's it's almost as if the Herodotus, who is obviously a Greek and no friend of the Persians, is paying tribute to the richness of the various cultures being destroyed by the Persians. And eventually, Herodotus gets to the major conflicts between the Greeks and the Persians, the famous Battle of Marathon in 490 B.C., Movies have been made and many books written about the deeds of self-sacrifice by the 300 brave Spartans at the Battle of Thermopylae, the Battle of Salamis, and the Persian navy that couldn't swim. In the end, Herodotus records that the Persian king Xerxes gave up trying to subdue Greece, and he headed back home. He left one of his generals in charge, but Mardonius was not able to conquer the Greeks either. Now, the big question, why read this? Why should we spend time reading this ancient history? Number one, filling in historical gaps. For students of the Bible in particular, it provides a window into the time period between the Old and New Testaments. So when the Old Testament closes out, the Babylonian Empire, having conquered the southern kingdom of Judah and taken many of the Jews into exile, is giving way to the Persians. But what happens next? Enter Herodotus. Number two, a deeper understanding of the New Testament. The book of Acts and the epistles offer an account of Paul and Peter and the other apostles traveling throughout the same world that Herodotus describes. And in his famous sermon at Pentecost, the apostle Peter acknowledges a miracle involving various people groups in this region of the world. It's chapter, uh, it's the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. And it says this, and how is it that we hear, each in our own language in which we were born, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. It's, it's fascinating, friends, and illuminating to get some idea of what these cultures might have been like before the Christian faith crossed into their borders. Number three, the nature of man. What the world was like that Christ came to redeem is important. What was this world like? Cannibalism, extreme violence, practices, despicable practices like mandatory temple prostitution, 
Herodotus' account highlights the fact that mankind was indeed in desperate need of redemption. Number four, culture versus multiculturalism. It's as current a topic as any. You know, what, what is the difference between appreciating other cultures on the one hand and making value judgments about cultures and religions on the other? Herodotus offers insight into how this conundrum was approached in the ancient world, and his particular approach is an important voice in this ongoing conversation. Finally, number five, entertainment. <laughs> Look, the first time I read Herodotus, I was well into adulthood, and I was angry, yes, angry, that no teacher ever introduced me to this work. I know that some of the stories are embellished. I know that some of them are not even true, but they are fantastic entertainment. There you have it, friends. Five reasons why you should read the histories by Herodotus. Getting questions or comments about my list, questions about various translations or versions to read, email me, bruce at aliociasociety.com.